Welcome to Code Utility. In this example we will build a custom view using constraint layout without any XML. I have created an empty Android Studio project with default XML and main activity. Now let's create a new package and include all our custom views inside this package. I am creating a new Kotlin class and name it as InfoboxView. Now we will extend this with material card view. We need to pass some parameters to the constructor of material card view. Let's add these parameters to the constructor of infobox view. The parameters are context, attribute set and define style attributes. Now pass these parameters to the material card view constructor. Don't forget to add an annotation JVM overloads to the constructor of your custom view. This will result in an exception if you run your app because we added attribute set we need to add this annotation. Now let's write an init block and write our code inside it. Before that we will create an parent constraint layout. This will hold the views inside which will be constrained to this view. Let's make it lazy. If you don't know about lazy initialization, I will link to a document in the description. Create a function named createViews. Add a function inside createViews function named updateCardView. To make our infobox view with rounded corners, let's set our radius property to 24f. Now set our material card view with padding value of 12 for left, top, right, and bottom. Let's try building to see if anything breaks. Before that we will set a layout params to our material card. Let's make the params as match parent for width and wrap content for height. Also change the design tab to wrap content vertically. Now let's add a background color for our material card. For simplicity let's use the color magenta from Android Graphics. Now we will test if everything is okay by building in the design tab. Okay. The padding we added does not seems to be working. Let's try updating the padding to different value. Okay, that does not seems to be resolving the problem. But don't worry we will continue and will fix it later as we proceed. Now we will work on creating our child views, which will be constrained to our parent constraint layout. Before writing our first child view, we will create a constraint set. This will define the rules of constraint in our layout. And make this lazy as well. Now let's add a layout param to our parent constraint layout and make it match our material card view. That is we will make this match parent for width and wrap content for height as well.
After that we will add out parent constraint layout to our material card view. Now let's move this code to a different function to keep it all clean. Now let's add our first child. This will be an app compact image view. This is our left icon on our info box. Let's create a function to keep our left icon code. Let's update our left icon properties using apply scoped function. We need a drawable to our left icon. Let's create it under res. Drawable folder. Search for the icon name info and insert it to our drawable. Now open that drawable and remove this line of code to make it white fill. Now let's set the drawable created to our left icon image view. Finally we will add this view to our parent constraint. Now we need to set constraints to this left icon view. Let's extract the code to a separate function. We need to use the constraint set to define our child view constraints. Let's add width and height to our left icon view. But before that we need an ID to refer to our views same as XML. We can generate one using the generate view ID function from view class. Now we can use the generated view ID by using dot ID on the view it was created. Let's set the width to wrap content and we will do the same to height and set it to wrap content as well. Now we will connect our constraints. We need to pass start ID, start side, end ID and end side. Here start ID is our left icon ID, and start side is our constraint top. And end ID is our parent constraint ID, and end side is our parent top. Now we will do the same to our start or left side. Copy the code and change the top from top to start. Now for these constraints to work we need to add two lines of code around our constraint set functions. This will clone the constraint from the parent constraint layout and apply our updated constraint back to parent layout. Now we will build our code to see the result. Yay! We have our first icon visible. But let's fix the padding issue we had. Move the padding from material card to this icon. Before doing that let's create a extension function to convert our values to pixels for the custom view to use it. This extension function can be called on any integer value, 
and it will return an integer value which will be pixel. We can use this function get system to get display metrics instead of accessing it from a context. We can avoid passing context by doing this. Now finally convert that to an integer. Now we can use this extension function and convert our values to pixel. That did not change anything. As I said before let's move this padding to our icon instead. Finally we see our padding in our icon. Let's move on to our next child view. This will show a text next to the icon view. Extend to an app compat text view and make it lazy as well. Let's set a function to add this view to parent constraint. Let's update its property using scoped function apply. Set a text to this text view. Please don't worry using direct values as string and integers. We will fix the code in our next video to move the string and constants used in this example to use it from an custom attribute file. Change the size of text view using text size property. Let's create an extension function the same way we did to our padding values. Now let's add this view to our parent constraint. We can now define the constraints for this text view. Let's separate that to a function. Let's define the width and height of this view the same way we did to our left icon view. Don't forget to generate an ID for this view.
Let's connect our text view constraints to parent and icon view as well. Connect start of text view to end of icon view. Same way connect top of text view to top of icon view. And finally same way connect bottom of text view to bottom of icon view. Now let's build to see the result. Icon size is very small. Feel free to change the value to match your preference. We will fix these problems in our next video when we move these size constants to our custom attribute file. That looks okay. Now let's change our text color to white and build again to test. Finally doing some tweaks. Updated to padding and icon view to 16. Head back to activity main.xml file and remove the hello world text view and use our custom info box view. Set the width to zero and height to wrap content and set the constraints to parent start, end and bottom and add some margins at the end. There you have it our first custom view. In the next video we will fix the hard-coded values for padding and size and move it to a custom attribute value. If you have not subscribed feel free to subscribe for more such videos. Thank you for watching.